right, well, first of all, I'd just like to thank you for taking this time and uh, bring with me, of course, greetings from Sweden. And uh, I understand you have a lot of um, uh, visitors on your site from Sweden. We were talking a little bit about this yesterday. Yes. Was it, um, I think Sweden was in sixth place or something? Right, right. We have a lot of people, uh, several thousand hits. Yeah. And if I don't, uh, if my memory don't fail me, uh, I think last time I checked we were in eighth place. So it must be that there's uh, uh, more people now than uh, last year, right? Yes. Yeah. Sweden is moving up. Yes. So um, uh, what I'm going to do today is um, I have a few reader questions from the blog that I'm a part of in Sweden. And um, uh, there's quite a few questions um, uh, about this Hebrew movement uh, thing, if you want to call it that, because sure. um, uh, we've had different representation of this movement in Sweden, and um, uh, they, some of the questions are, are related to um, other organizations that are into this movement that have maybe um, helped raise these questions. And then some of the questions are going to be part of um, uh, as a response to seeing the Eclipse uh, okay, DVD. Right. As you know, that's the first uh, DVD that uh, has been translated to Swedish. So uh, at this time, there's been thousands of Swedes that have watched the, the DVD either on online or we've sent out the DVD. And I have no idea how many DVDs you've sent out. I'm sure you've sent some from here, right? Sure. So um, uh, I'm going to start with reader questions. And then I have a few questions of my own. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start with a question from, uh, there's going to be a lot of Swedish names now, uh, Olaf, uh, I'm just doing the first name just for their sake, privacy sake. Um, he says the following, <clears throat> uh, Pastor Bills, uh, I'm shaken by the discoveries uh, that you've made, uh, but I can't see that there's enough time for prophecy to be fulfilled before 2015. Uh, I'm thinking about the Antichrist and the prophet appearing, uh, the implementation of a one-world government, etc., etc. Uh, have you given this any thought yourself? Yes, uh, a lot of people misunderstand or misunderstood, uh, maybe because of my own excitement, not maybe communicating it correctly, but uh, when I talk about the 2014-2015 eclipses, uh, I'm not the one that can cause eclipses. This has nothing to do with me. God, God determines the eclipses. Uh, science and NASA determined the dates mm -hmm. and how they lined up. Now, what I was saying is those eclipses, I think, are very significant on God's calendar. Mm -hmm. But I never said that they were the beginning of the tribulation, the middle of the tribulation, or the end of the tribulation. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that these are very significant, and I was making the comment that if uh, you believed that it was at the end, well then 2008 would be very significant. If you believe it's in the middle, 2012 would be very significant. If you believe it's the beginning of the tribulation, then 2014, 2015 would be very significant. All I know is they are definitely tied to Israel. They definitely, I believe, are signs of the imminent return of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But whether it's the beginning, the middle, the end, I don't ever set so the some, some of the that. critique that is actually based on uh, misunderstandings. Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Sure. Okay, interesting. Uh, then I have a question from a Methodist pastor and a good friend of mine, uh, Bernd Isaacson. And uh, he is wondering about the four blood moons or the lunar eclipses in 2014 and 15, uh, of which the last one is appearing on Sukkot uh, right. 2015. Uh, and, and he's making the following statement, uh, in order for the earlier patterns to repeat itself, wouldn't 2013 be a year to highlight? And uh, he's referring to the four lunar eclipses in 67, uh, and also right after 1948, and all the way back to 1493, uh, and maybe even the destruction of the temple. Uh, you've mentioned in the program, I think, that there might have been a lunar sure. eclipse. So he's wondering if, would, if 2013 wouldn't be a year to look out for? Uh, very, very much. Uh, like I said, I'm not dogmatic. I just know that uh, it's like a bullseye and how big you want the bullseye to be, how many layers are going out, like a, a ripple and a wave. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe 2010 to 2020 are all going to be significant. Yes. You know, so I, I believe 2013 could be very significant. One of the amazing things is in Genesis 114, God said he put the sun and the moon and the stars and the heavens for signs. See, that is so significant. We think that 
he put the sun and the moon for heat or warmth. He lists four reasons why he put the sun and the moon there. And the number one reason, he says, is for signs. Mm -hmm. And in Hebrew, uh, the word is oath, and it means signals. Okay, it's like in a sporting event, the, the coach is giving signals. So the number one reason for it is to give signals, and it has to do with his appearing. Mm -hmm. And then it says it's for seasons. Well, we think winter, spring, summer, fall. But in Hebrew, there's a different Hebrew word than what they use for seasons to represent that. The Hebrew word is moed, which means the divine appointments, the festivals. So God purposely says he's going to put the sun and the moon to give signals on his feast days. That has to do with his coming, his first coming, his second coming. And so they're signals. And uh, whether it's a year before, a year after, I don't know. But I know it's this generation. I know it's that decade, 2010 to 2020. And uh, the amazing thing, too, and, and this might be... Uh, they have to get some of the DVDs to find this out, but I just want to bring this out. The, the Hebrew word for oath is the Hebrew letter, the first letter is the aleph, mm -hmm. which in the ancient picture language was an ox that I showed you the other night. Yes, yes. It means leader, strength. The middle letter is a bob, which looks like a nail. And then the last letter is the tav. Well, the letter tav is in the form of uh, English, the small letter T. It was a cross. Yes. So the very word sign in Hebrew, in the picture language when Moses wrote it, is the leader nailed to the cross. Mm. So it's, it's all tied. The eclipses are even tied to his first coming as well as the second coming. I'm going to go on to a question from um, Pad. Uh, once again, more Swedish names here. And um, he's uh, interested uh, in where the signs can be seen from. You've probably gotten this question before. Oh, sure. Uh, is it from Jerusalem or some other city? Uh, because he doubts it can be seen from all over the world. Uh, do you have any knowledge on that? Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People ask that. Uh, everyone's familiar with John 3.16. Mm -hmm. God so loved who? The whole world. Okay, well, would it be fair if uh, he gave signals only to Israel but not to the Gentiles? So obviously, these four eclipses, when you look at them, of course they don't all appear in Israel. Each one covers different areas of the world. So over the two years, everyone in the whole world gets to observe the eclipse as a signal of his coming. Okay, so The last so one is in time. Jerusalem. Yeah, the last one, uh, the, the main one, the climax, the big one, is in Sukkot, is in Jerusalem. That's but the ones yeah. precede that... You have Asia, you have Africa, or you have America, Asia, Europe, and you know, and so it's neat. Of course, you're not all going to be. So we can't Jerusalem. really get stuck on that. It should always be from Jerusalem. We see from Jerusalem. No. Well, that well yeah, the, the it is. To see. If they're for signals, and he loves the whole world, he's going to signal the whole world. Yes. And so when you go to Nassau's website, mm -hmm. it'll show you exactly where they can be seen. Mm -hmm. And so you can go right okay, to the so website. if anyone wants to know, if anyone wants NASA to know, website. they can go to the NASA's website and they will show you exactly, and they will see there's not any part of the world that isn't aware of. So one time or another, it's, it's yeah. Every part of the world is going to get the sign. Yeah. Uh, then I have a question from um, uh, Tord, and um, he has uh, read about the Middle Age, Jew, uh, Middle Ages. I'm sorry, Jewish prophet uh, prophesying that there will be eight periods of the year of Jubilee starting 1517 until the kingdom of God will be established by Messiah. Uh, interesting enough, it was exactly in 1517 the Turks took control over Jerusalem and cared for it until 1917. And uh, for those of us that have studied the, the situation a little bit, the Turks actually made some positive changes uh, uh, towards the Jew situation in Israel. Uh, 50 years later in 1967, Jerusalem was returned into the hands of the Jews. Uh, have you by any chance heard of this prophecy, and do you know who this Jewish prophet might be? I'm, I can't say that I know for sure. It sounds familiar, but I have to do some research on that. So uh, this, this um, reader has just been on this uh, search, who it might be. He had read it on the blog, and it might actually have been our blog. Uh, so, uh, but he wants to know who it is. So uh, I'm going to move on then to...